To tell the story of SUNY Empire State College's 50 years, you actually have to go back 51 years. The year is 1970. The Beatles break up, disco is king, and SUNY Chancellor Ernest Boyer sets out on a bold educational mission. Envisioning a revolution in higher education, Boyer appoints a task force to explore ways to make SUNY degree programs more responsive to the needs of society, creating educational opportunities that are more imaginative, more versatile, and more flexible, both in their structure and style. The blueprint is for a non-residential college with learning centers throughout the state, a rethinking of the higher education landscape in keeping with the decade's call for a fairer and more open society, and for the questioning of traditional norms in every sphere of our lives. But thanks to funding from the Carnegie Corporation and the Ford Foundation, as well as funding in the state budget, Governor Nelson Rockefeller officially approves Empire State College in SUNY's master plan. Jim Hall is named acting director on April 1st, 1971. At the same time, the New York State Legislature establishes the School of Labor Studies, the first component of Empire State College's Manhattan Learning Center to serve the higher education needs of trade union membership in areas of industrial and labor relations. It is renamed in 1986 in honor of Harry Van Arsdale Jr., president of the New York City Central Labor Council. By 1972, five learning centers have been established, one each in Manhattan, Albany, Old Westbury, Rochester, and London, England. Just two years later, the Commission on Higher Education accredits Empire State College, the first public college of its kind to receive accreditation. In January 1978, SUNY Empire extends its international reach with a cooperative program in Israel, headed up by Kenneth Abrams. By its 50th anniversary year, SUNY Empire would work with international partners around the globe, offering international programs in Albania, the Czech Republic, Dominican Republic, Greece, Lebanon, and Turkey. By 1979, the Center for Distance Learning is created in Saratoga Springs, and SUNY Empire is at the forefront of educational innovation. Courses are supplemented with audio and television supports. By the 1980s, everything is big. TVs, buildings, and of course, the hair. Empire State College is expanding too. By 1981, enrollment is up to 3,761, 10 times greater than when the college was founded. And full and part-time faculty grows too, from 22 to 150. And we're just getting started. In January 1984, students start enrolling in master's degree programs for the first time. The 90s are all about advancements, the compact disc, satellite technology, and of course, the internet. Not surprisingly, SUNY Empire incorporates all of them in advancing its mission. In 1990, the Middle States Commission on Higher Education issues a glowing report, awarding the college an unconditional 10-year renewal, the maximum. Meg Banke joins the college in 1991 as coordinator of academic services for the Center for Distance Learning. Meg holds a variety of posts over her tenure at the institution, including vice provost, provost, acting president, and executive vice president for academic affairs. In 1993, the first issue of All About Mentoring is published, highlighting a key facet of the SUNY Empire experience. 27 years later, in 2020, mentor Alan Mandel will oversee the publication's 54th issue and begin working on the 55th. And in 1995, the SUNY Learning Network and Center for Distance Learning provide online courses for SUNY Empire and SUNY. The center becomes a major provider of online courses for the SUNY Learning Network, including 19 campuses just two years later. In 1996, SUNY Empire celebrates its 25th anniversary. Professor and then director of the SUNY Empire Archive, Richard Bonabo, memorializes the college's first quarter century and the promise continues, Empire State College, the first 25 years. By 1997, SUNY Empire has enjoyed nearly 30 years of growth. Jim Hall, who together with Ernest Boyer, had the vision for this unique educational engine and helped put it on its track, enters his well-deserved retirement. Former Vice President for Academic Affairs Jane Altis comes out of retirement to serve as interim president. 
And SUNY Empire enters the new millennium as a flagship institution for the mentor-student model, leading the way in incorporating the use of new technologies into individualized degree programs. Y2K doesn't slow down SUNY Empire. Joseph B. Moore becomes the school's second president in the year 2000. He brings with him vast higher education experience centered on strengthening institutions' capacity to support a diverse range of engaged learners. Generosity from the college community and beyond keeps SUNY Empire moving forward in its mission to provide a high quality, flexible education to students from all walks of life and all ages no matter where they are in their educational journey. In 2002, the Office of Advancement raises $8 million through the Promise Continues campaign. Two years later, alumna Susan Turbin pledges the largest alumni gift ever. And the Charitable Leadership Foundation awards the college $1.25 million to implement the Master of Arts in Teaching program, the largest gift ever from a private foundation. By the time President Moore departs in 2007, his administration has secured $26 million in capital funding to complete college facilities in Saratoga Springs and build regional centers across the state. In 2008, Alan Davis is named the third president of SUNY Empire. He serves in that role for three and a half years, forging important relationships with peer institutions and advancing the university's strategic plan, the power of SUNY. The following year, the college establishes the Office of Veterans and Military Education, serving the needs of veterans and military-aligned students and their families. The office will go on to support 1,289 military-aligned students and boast 3,000 military-aligned alumni by the year 2020. The 2010s usher in a new era of social change and social movements nationwide. And as it has been time and time again, SUNY Empire is at the forefront of shifts in consciousness and awareness. In 2011, the Metropolitan Center launches the Black Male Initiative, established to coach, mentor, and support traditionally underrepresented students. It is a rousing success. Two years later, in 2013, Meredith Hancock is appointed the college's fourth president, bringing with her experience in urban services and education administration. And in 2016, Elliot Dawes is named to the newly created position of Chief Diversity Officer for Institutional Equity and Inclusion. Dawes brings unparalleled experience to the post, following decades as a civil rights attorney and as a trial lawyer for the Department of Justice. In July of 2018, SUNY Empire marks the 10th anniversary of its RN to Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. The inaugural nursing cohort was just 42 students. In 2018, the college has 1,250 undergraduate and graduate nursing students training to become, teach, and lead the next generation of healthcare professionals. In July 2019, Jim Malatris becomes SUNY Empire's fifth president, the first SUNY alumnus to hold the post. His administration guides the college through unprecedented times as the COVID-19 pandemic changes the way the world lives, works, and learns. SUNY Empire transitions too, with years of expertise at its foundation to fully online learning. In August of 2020, President Malatris is named the 14th Chancellor of the SUNY system. Chief of Operations Beth Berlin is named officer in charge. Until joining SUNY system administration in December 2020, that is when the Dean of the School for Graduate Studies, Nathan Gagne, steps in as officer in charge, bringing with him extensive experience in curriculum development and planning. By 2021, SUNY Empire State College has grown in important ways with more than 700 faculty, 17,000 students, and more than 91,000 alumni, and a critical infrastructure of 465 support and professional staff all over the state, responding to a range of student and administrative needs each and every day. This summer, the college will open a brand new Park Avenue location right in the heart of Manhattan. In the fall, we'll launch our first ever doctoral program in EDD and Educational Leadership and Change. And we're expanding masters and undergraduate programs too, in business, general studies, liberal arts, and more. 
A lot has certainly changed over the years, but our mission and vision remain steadfast to provide motivated learners with access to innovative, flexible, quality academic programs that empower people and strengthen communities. And we continue to build upon the diversity of our students, their work and life experiences, and their personal and professional goals as the cornerstone of our academic programs. Today, the so-called non-traditional adult learner is not all that uncommon, but half a century ago, SUNY Empire was just one of a handful of institutions that took the lead, championing adult students and acknowledging their life experience and learning it remains critical to this very day. And now, as SUNY Empire State College celebrates its 50th year, we reflect on our proud past, carry forward our cherished traditions, and look ahead to 50 more years of leading the way in higher education.